This execution method was practiced most during Roman times. The unfortunate soul was forced into a large, often metal vessel that sat over a raging fire. It was sometimes filled with water, but if the executioner was feeling creative, various oils, animal fat, or even tar was used. To capitalize on the maximum misery, the person was actually brought to a boil. At first, it wouldn't be so bad. The slowly warming liquid would hug your body and even relax your very tensed muscles. Once the fluid reaches 110 degrees, you will feel a light sear along your first layer of skin. But with each passing second, it will intensify until reaching a maddening level. The proteins in your cells are slowly being destroyed. At 120, the steam will grow thicker, invading your lungs. The widespread burn is penetrating deeper. At 1.30, the pain has escalated to the sensation of hot sandpaper rubbing your skin raw. The damage is now down to your third layer of skin. You don't know it, but the capillaries near your surface are beginning to leak. Despite all the fluid surrounding you, your mouth feels like a beach in the Arizona sun. At 1.50, you feel like a fire has now spread inside of your body. The scalding steam has damaged your lung tissue. Any attempt at a breath feels like inhaling acid. Also, your skin is now spitting, splitting, and oozing from widespread fourth-degree burns. At 1.60, hypoxia is a serious threat. The air around you has been hijacked by humidity and rising water. You're no longer getting enough oxygen to your organs. At 180, your muscles tighten and shrink from the prolonged heat. You can't fight it even if you wanted to. As your body seizes up, you slip under the near-boiling hell fluid. Only diehard history buffs understand what Ling Chi is. In a few words, it's nightmare fuel. It involved carving out the flesh of the condemned ever so slowly to prolong death and extend suffering. It was firmly outlawed in 1905 when an amateur photographer took photos of the process. Once circulated, just the sight of them induced physical illness. One particular execution by Ling Chi was worse than the rest. You see, the executioners could fillet large sections from the body speeding up death. Lu Jin, who was accused of being a corrupt eunuch, endured a full three-day slicing session. This was the longest slow-slicing execution ever performed. The unfortunate man was tied to a wooden frame in front of anyone who wished to watch. The executioner began by scoring the flesh on his leg with the tip of his knife. He then dug it into the lowest layer of skin and began sawing. After stripping the first piece of bloody meat, he threw it down and continued. Jin let out guttural, inhuman screeches and screams as tears and blood dripped down. In total, he suffered 3,357 total cuts. These covered his entire body and tongue. Even his eyes were sliced. After every square inch was raw and devastated and all flesh was removed, slices were made to the muscles beneath. Even his scalp was rendered into an exploded, mangled mess. Once his suffering finally ended, all victims were invited to purchase his flesh for consumption. First of all, you're in for a bit of a process. Human skin doesn't just slide off your body, you'll need to be tenderized a bit. Either you'll be placed in the sun all day until you're burnt to a crisp or dipped into boiling water. Which would you prefer? Sadly, that isn't even the worst part. Instead of having time to recover from your smoldering pain, the flaying process will begin. The skin on your face will be sliced off first because it's the easiest and most accessible. The cut will extend beneath all layers of skin to just above the muscle. After, small punctures will be made all over your body to score the flesh. Then, very long, thin pieces will be cut and peeled off of you like you're some kind of cutie orange. You will feel every Every single nerve ending as it is dissected, and these nerves extend into even your deepest layer of skin. This horrific torture will go on for hours. Death will come from blood loss, shock, hypothermia, or infection. Your skin is an organ that keeps in heat and keeps out dangerous bacteria. Without it, you cannot survive. You will be forced to endure your agony for up to an entire day before your system gives out. Way, way back in the day, the last thing that people wanted was to earn the title of being an enemy of a Viking warrior. They allegedly wouldn't think twice about ripping out bubbles and tying them to trees. One supposed execution method deemed the blood eagle would exceed your worst nightmares. It involved restraining a person to a shorter object, hunched over, chest down. This may be the point that you want to end this video. An especially sharp sword was used to carve into the upper back, I mean beyond flesh and muscle. Sometimes long, vertical, deep gashes were made on each side only to be sliced in further and ripped open, revealing the rib bones. That same tool was then used to saw away the rib cage from the spinal column. For some of the unfortunate souls, they would be taking their last breath around this time. For others, who were even more unfortunate, may have still been alive and even aware. If only it were over. 
That same sword would be used to violently rip out each lung lobe so that the tissue was protruding from the grizzly back wounds. The lung tissue coupled with the rib bone sticking out gave the illusion of having wings, hence the name of this horror. Life would no longer be compatible with this state. Death would come quickly after from suffocation and or exsanguination. Let me just tell you that no matter how quickly death came, it still wasn't quick enough. This macabre contraption originated in France in the late 1700s, but it still remained their main method of execution into the 1970s. It was fittingly deemed the National Razor. It was a tall, narrow apparatus with a sharp, weighted blade suspended at the top. The condemned was forced to lie beneath it with their neck secured in a type of stockade. At the executioner's behest, the blade was released and... Gravity did the trick. The sharp force cleanly severed the head from the spinal column in a blink. Aside from being quite theatrical, it also appeared to cause death instantly, but now we know better. Just imagine lying on that stiff bench face up. That blight blade is about nine feet above just taunting you. The rounded wood surrounding your neck is making you feel incredibly claustrophobic and you can't help but wish that it would just fall already without warning. The anticipation is making your guts churn with ice water. And then you hear it. Three, two, you feel the bench below you vibrate. You inadvertently tense up your muscles and clench your eyes shut. There's a ball of immense shock that is absorbed by your throat and proceeds to shoot in all directions. It only lasts a moment before your entire world numbs. Your vision becomes skewed by rapid motion. Your mind won't allow you to understand this, but your head is rolling off of the bench while your body remains stationary. All pain is now gone because your nervous system's highway has been severed by the blade, but you're still conscious. Extensive scientific studies have demonstrated that the brain can remain aware for several seconds after the head is cleanly removed from the body. 